Good morning. Hi. Hi, Courtney. I am Sarah Beth Burke, and I am so excited to have my guest here, Courtney, today to talk about how she is becoming more than her title. If you've followed me before, or if you know my work, I'm a researcher on hybrid professional identity. And I look at how people are more than just jacks of all trades or that they wear a lot of hats because we've used those terms so much in society and in the workforce. And yet there's another emerging and sort of hidden group in the workforce that are actually blending and combining multiple work identities together. And that's where the hybridity shapes and forms. And it's something that's really hard to communicate and express in the world, but so many people are feeling this struggle. And I write about this work because I'm trying to help people embrace and have permission to connect to their different identities and show up as their full self in what they do. So the purpose of these interviews and stories on LinkedIn in Becoming More Than Your Title is to bring in and showcase great guests so that they can tell what they've felt in their career and in their work life when they have all these identities and they don't understand how to fit them together or they have figured out how to fit them together and they're gonna share that too. So with Courtney today, we're gonna hear how she's experienced her hybridity. Maybe she knew about it before, maybe this is a new revelation. I can't wait to find out. And the way, Courtney, I like to treat these conversations is kind of like we were at a networking event and we just kind of ran into each other. And lo and behold, that ultimate question of, what do you do pops up? And so we'll start there and then dive into your story. Are you ready? I'm ready, let's do this. Let's do it. So Courtney, tell us, what do you do? What's your little elevator pitch? Well, I'm a bicyclist that started a marketing company that derives its best ideas from a bicycle. So when I'm out riding, my best ideas come to me. That's fascinating. That's literally what you tell people when you meet them. Cyclista marketing came about because I got all my ideas out on my bike. And so, cyclista means female cyclist. Cyclista, I love that. So you literally brought the cycling into your marketing and that became your company. Yes. And how long have you been doing this? Off and on since 2008, the last recession kind of started picking up and I lost my job. So I started the social media marketing. About that time, uh, it has evolved and I went business official with an LLC in 2020. Oh man, so, well congrats. Last year is a big year for all of us. Lots I of know. <laughs> so Courtney, I wanna hear what does, when you hear the term hybrid professional, what does that mean to you? How did you first encounter this work or is this new to you? Cause that's fine too, wherever you are with it. Well, of course I have to say I found you on Instagram and some probably some hashtag or something but brought us together. But what you said before when you were talking about your work and giving permission to step outside of VP at a bank or lawyer or teacher or scientist or any of those things, it was like, wow, I can just kind of be me and call it whatever I want. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> right. it, was, it was like an epiphany. I was so excited. So I think, you know, crafting that and if I, you know, I had to sign my paperwork CEO and I'm like, well, yeah, but you know, it, it, it really, I don't, title myself as that. I don't introduce myself as CEO of my own marketing company. Right. So this concept of, of hybridity was something you stumbled upon, it sounds like, through whatever I put out on the internet. Yes. And it gave you that sense of permission. And so what have you thought about since then, once you had that revelation, how have you sort of incorporated that into whatever you're doing? Uh, I think I have given myself the green light to take my passion and what's fun and incorporate that into that hybrid identity. And I have outlets, I, I have an intern, so I'm teaching. So I have outlets for that skill set. I have, I, I'm one of my clients is a lawyer, so I'm getting to dig back into what I learned in law and help market that. It's a big challenge in my business. And then it really all comes back to like lessons and ideas that come on the bike and how can mm. I grow that? And I do have the uh, plans to found a business or fund a business that um, incorporates some of those things into like a bicycling community. 
So, th so that's what I'm so interested in, right, is these crossovers. A lot about being a hybrid is working at intersections where two things or more things are coming together simultaneously. Right. And that can make tension or contradictions, it's two things that aren't alike. It's like, how do these fit? So tell me more about how you're thinking of this merge and marrying the, the cycling side of you with the marketing. You just talked about a community and how do you see these different parts of yourself actually shaping and influencing each other? I think the marketing company can just evolve into the business and that's that's my hope and my goal and my dream. And if I need to hire someone to take care of the clients who I currently serve, certainly I can do that, but I can just evolve. One of the hats I wear in my marketing company is community management and building community around bicycles, whether it's a group ride or a group of passionate cyclists advocating or a group of you know cyclists that just support one another. Uh, there is a real need for community to help for safety, to help just for, you know, exercise and enjoyment. And like, how how awesome would it be to, when I'm out doing those lessons on my bike, maybe have a group of 10 teenagers learning along with me and it's physics mm -hmm. and they don't even know it. Totally, sort of those hidden implied things that are just happening that are right. a natural outlet. Right, and just really giving it structure, giving it a place, giving it a brand and a title. And hopefully, you know, that's what I do on social media. I, I amplify the message to bring the people together in community, whether it's your community following you on Facebook or my community following me on my, my bike spot page. So that's, that's really the plan. So tell me about how people receive this when you tell them about how you're combining cycling and your social media background and marketing and starting a business and being a founder. How do people wrap their head around you because you have all these different parts, right? Yeah, I'm going to start with my 94-year-old grandma who thinks <laughs> I take naps and play on my computer <laughs> when I'm visiting her and her, her my room is down in her lower level. Oh, are you just taking a nap down there? I'm like, I've been on four Zoom calls and I, I, I've done business today. So she doesn't understand the concept of the digital environment. And a lot of people don't understand still even in 2020 like when they're even on those platforms oh what do you you do social you you play on your phone all day yes i do i play on my phone all day and i ride bikes <laughs> that's that if i started my 10 second pitch like that you'd be interested but maybe i lose a little credibility so in doing that um crossover transition you know i am doing solid work i'm speaking to groups about how to do their marketing better and building others businesses now i want to transfer those skills to build my business and to mm. build the community of just it, it a day, no day feels like it's going to work because i'm doing yeah. what i love i would love to pause on that for a moment and hear about when are you most in your zone of genius in whatever you're doing you talked about riding your bike and getting great ideas and then bringing that into the work what i've learned about hybrids is that these, these flow moments, right? You've probably heard that term when you're losing track of time and work feels effortless and you're just energized and you just, things are just great. You're actually in a hybrid state because you're bringing all these identities together to do their magic. Right. So can you tell us about one of these moments that you, where you experience the most flow in your work. I have so many, but I started a habit of just writing a couple days a week to the coffee shop that's a mile from my house. And that during quarantine was like my lifeline, like might be the only people I see all day is to ride my bike mm -hmm. to the coffee shop. But that 10 minutes on the bike, it starts your body, it starts the flow, it starts, and then I get to the coffee shop and I park at the bike rack and we start talking about the ride and I'm like, no way. And then I have a new friend and yeah. <laughs> you know, I go inside and I'm in this great mood and the baristas are like, oh, you know? <laughs> and I get home and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's where it's at. And I'm ready to just mm. log in and start doing the work that I need to do for my clients. Or I, I've thought of another way to connect them into their community. Yes. I'm, I'm hearing that a lot from you. And I also see some people joining us live. I want to shout out to Michelle and Donnell. It's great that you're here. Um, what I'm hearing from you is that, you know, getting into exercise, that is a way that people tap into flow state, whether they're rock climbing or in your case, biking. 
And it allows your brain, you know, to just be in a different place as opposed to like so analytical. But you're finding that community again when you're meeting people and talking right. to other bikers. And that's actually starting to bridge what you had mentioned earlier, where you want to build community with cycling. Cycling is like the medium to then connect with these other parts of yourself, the business and the education. Do I have that right? Yeah. And even the law, like I've done a lot more advocacy work than I ever mm -hmm. really thought that I would uh, getting in my local bicycle planning commission and advocating oh, yeah. for bicycle safety bills at the Senate floor. I was like the last thing I did before lockdown is got a bill passed for more cycling safety. So it really, it really is my love language yeah. and it is my, it's my personal brand as well as my business brand. So that's really handy is like, okay, if I'm in your phone under bike or cycling, I've done my job. <laughs> I love that. That's a really good metric, though, to understand like that is your impact. That's what you aspire. And that's how you know you're making a difference is getting people to see you in this way and right. connecting with you through your cycling efforts. That's really powerful. What do you call yourself? I mean, I looked at your LinkedIn and you talk about your social media marketing consulting you really are the the head cyclista or something. I mean, <laughs> you have great. a hybrid title. There is another language in cycling, you know, the peloton, the, the leader of the peloton and pulling the peloton. You're making it easier for others to ride when you're in the front and doing the work. Mm -hmm. And as far as my marketing company goes, that is what I'm doing. I'm bringing out really hybrid identities and other people. Oh, mm -hmm. be authentic on your social media and share that you have that hobby along with being an attorney. Or, you know, as a personal trainer, let them know that you have a soft side with your kids. And being able to do that for others, you know, the cobbler's shoes, yeah. or the cobbler's kids in their shoes, it, that is probably my biggest struggle is allowing myself time and doing the marketing work for myself. So I support myself with uh, a, a mastermind group and a couple of accountability partners to kind of help with that. Yes, I think we all need support. I, in my own journey, trying to figure out my parts before I knew what hybridity was, no right. one told me that, right? It's, it's you can't do this work for yourself. You really need someone to help shine and reflect back like who you are and how you're showing up. So then you start to see new sides of yourself and change your language into being this multifaceted, really the, the full version of you. And so right. I agree, it's like, it's hard to see yourself and then project that back out. I think you hit it right on with the reflection. And I think be aware as you're trying to craft this hybrid identity or as you're trying to identify what, where you, where you want to be is the different mirrors. You know, mm -hmm. the people who see me in my, my cycling group, I've had them say, oh, I don't even recognize you without your helmet on. Okay, well, that's okay. But guess what? I have this whole other identity with blonde hair that sometimes I put on makeup and, you know, <laughs> I dress up pretty back before I stayed home all the time. Um, and then maybe somebody who I've worked with in the past where I was wearing suits and, you know, proper office apparel would be like, I didn't even know you knew how to sweat. I'm like, yeah, I, I sweat a lot. Oh, my so, gosh. I think those mirrors, and and I have a really, I'm so blessed that I have a really good accountability partner and who really isn't afraid to give that back and be like, well, I, I see, you know, this is a strength, this maybe needs work, and those are awesome. Those people are great. Yeah, the mirrors matter so much. When I work with people to find their hybridity, I ask them to interview a couple colleagues or people that are close in their life, friends, family, because there's some learning about how they are noticing what those people are doing that we literally just aren't conscious of. I think you're in an unconscious place when you're in your hybridity because you're like, I'm just doing what I do. What do you mean this is special or different? And yeah, I love getting those different perspectives. Even kids, kids have such a unique way to just make it very um, minimal and strip it down and be like, yeah, you're, you're on your phone a lot, mom, or whatever they're gonna say. Right. right. <laughs> Or the honesty of my grandmother, like you're just playing on your phone and taking naps. Yes, that's all I do. Right. And yet there's some truth in that, right? Because they see something there that you can go, huh, what is she noticing? And if that's right. how I look, like, what does that mean? Right? Exactly. 
The, the other thing I want to point out that you've been saying is how you've come into realizing you need to tell people more who you are. You have to be explicit because you mentioned, you know, you're Courtney with the bicycle helmet versus Courtney with the makeup and dressed up. People are like, oh, I've never seen you that way. And they see you only as one thing in one space. And so if you don't come and share about your cycling when you're in business mode or you know business and cycling mode, people only hold on to one slice of you. And the hybrid is about demonstrating the combination, right? So I love that you are sharing that too. I, I've always loved the corporate Christmas party because I think that's like a little sliver. And I'm talking about really early in my career when I worked at a bank and I showed up as myself and people were like, whoa, like you look really fun. I am really fun sitting at the <laughs> desk in the bank. I am not, but outside mm -hmm. of this, yes. And I think, yes, there's a time to go in and be at the bank and be in your, your stiff clothes and do the proper things. And then yes, there is a time for people to realize that you're a full human. Mm -hmm. The full human is big. I was listening to a Brene Brown Dare to Lead podcast about work is human. And it was this idea of we are the sum of our parts, right? You can't orphan yourself. You need to show up and work and be you and not just be like this one little, you know, serious business banker, or whatever, um, right. because it's important to our humanity as individuals. Right. And I think coming out of college or maybe as I was younger, I thought I had to compartmentalize that. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's something you talk about is you know, there is the compartmentalization, but then there's that, oh, I can, I can wear my bike clothes to work. And then that is part of my brand. Okay. And these are, these are sort of bike clothes. I have a training right after this. So. And yeah little pause is this is this our little tv timeout Let's see if we get you back there we go i i said we just had a little tv timeout i was gonna have a sip of coffee excuse me oh yeah thank you that was a great little break no commercial it was just a break <laughs> yeah there's no ads just a break just, just keep yeah, you know it's like awesome morning. Morning. <laughs> everybody's on their internet so yeah we, it just Thank you. Um, I was actually going to ask you about when you were younger and earlier in your career, what you what you were like and what advice you would have given your younger self now that you realize how to in integrate these identities together. And you started to go down that path anyway. Do you want to just finish that idea? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I was I was really pulled that I had to have the exact right education and fit into the round peg hole. Mm -hmm. And here I am, a square trying to fit, definitely not fitting into the bank. That was that was a nice opportunity, but it wasn't for me. And as a part of that, I started volunteering at the YMCA right down the street just to get a free membership. I'm like, mm -hmm. I can lifeguard for six hours for a free membership, no problem. And that spirit of, it was at the, that time triathlon, led to people just wanting me to hire, or just wanting to hire me to help them train. How can I how can I learn how to swim for a triathlon? I'm like, well, it's not like what you're doing in the pool there. So, and I, I, that was a, that was a skill I didn't learn. I've mm. always struggled with writing my resume, even coming right out of college. And like, well, yeah, that's what my degree says, but I've done so much more than that in college. And you know, this experience as a leadership role in student government, and this experience in the athletic department as it, you know, it was my job in the athletic department. And I, I felt like all of that was missing in the standard mm. resume. There you go. And how did you figure out how to fix that, how to solve that problem? Well, I don't know if I've ever, I, I've just given up. I'm like, oh, I don't write my resume anymore. Would you like to talk about how I can help you? Um, <laughs> well, that's one way to fix it. Um, I do help other people write their LinkedIn bios and write theirs, but it, that was one of the hardest things is, I let my LinkedIn go dormant. I mm. had over 500 connections when I lived in Florida and just kind of let it go. And I, I did kind of have a new fresh start with the marketing company here in Denver. And 
okay, how can I how can I build this? And it really is pretty bare bones. I plan to kind of add some of the cycling to it now with that emerging, but mm. that's my biggest struggle is how to, you know, in that expected format or applying to the standard mm. job, I, I never feel like I fully express myself in that. Those are such great points. How do we get fully seen, especially in these platforms or even just professional materials like resumes and platforms like LinkedIn that still are very much about boxes? You yes. have to fit this template. You have yes. to sound like this. You need these keywords. They go in these places. And if you don't right. fit that perfectly, we don't know what to tell you because it doesn't. Right. Work. Well, here's page one. And that talks about my background in education. And here's page two. Oh, you, you did science undergrad? Right. And it, 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 it's, it's surprising to other people. And I'm like, well, why am I not just putting that in a whole total mm -hmm. package? And I guess enunciating that or saying that in a way where a hybrid title can kind of incorporate at least a few of those things. Yeah, it, it's helps. part of the puzzle that I'm still working on in my research and in discussions with people like you and other experts that are in the industry of hiring and recruiting and career development. How do we reconcile the tension of being multifaceted, and I call it hybrid, versus being in the expertise singularity spot? Yeah. And truthfully, I think we're on the cusp. I think this is a new wave, and there's we're sort of retrofitting ourselves to fit the systems. But I do think the systems will have to start breaking down to let us be more of our hybrid selves. Because right. I think the employers are going to demand seeing more of it. I think um, clients are going to resonate more with people when they see the diversity of ability in those people. But there's a caveat here, a big one. It doesn't mean you get to start sharing everything about you, right? It's still sort of this curated version. Yeah. I, I like to give the analogy of you are a recipe. Like you don't throw every spice that's in the drawer into the thing that you're doing because that just doesn't work. That's right, not right. the right combination. You're trying to pick which spices are the Courtney ones that are the most bright and the special cold. blend or the, the special, special sauce. blend. Yes. Right. I, I posted blend. the other day and it was something like you are your own special sauce. They can copy your recipe, but they'll never be you. Oh. And Yes. And I say that to so many people in my industry and so many people that I work with is, you know, I can give you a calendar to go do your social media. I can give you the the templates even. But the, the sauce that I have bringing to this is that background in law, the background in education, the back science, you know, whatever I'm translating into the copy or into the post and then going out and finding the audience to match that. Courtney, that was the best quote right there. I'm like, snap, you just nailed it. That is what this is about. You are telling people to look at all of their different parts, but find the ones that are your special sauce and yeah. work the best together. And I loved your language. I am just, ah, oh, that was such a good moment right there. That's the takeaway for me today is helping people figure out their special blend. So yeah. good. Yeah. And and the exercise that got me to that, I have to say, is is the Venn diagram exercise mm. that is from your book and writing and you know looking at community layered over education with law with science and then bicycling like the wheel that it's all within kind of moving around and it, you know all of those parts can move together and sometimes one shows more than the other and maybe I should make this as like a, a gif you know <laughs> That you know, I have this bicycle move and it stops on today. We're going to do a little more of the science part of it. Awesome. Ready? Awesome. Let's go. Yes. I think that notion that there's proportions that can change depending on the day or the time, everything you're describing, just my heart is singing because this is the power of the work is to see the intersection, the Venn diagram, and the fact that you're saying, this is the tool I just used that helped me describe this in a new way. And then cycling is sort of the capsule. I'm just blown away <laughs> right now, quite honestly. Well, I think my solution for everything is that we need to ride bikes. Yes, we, when, let's go ride bikes. <laughs> when the, the one million feet of snow that we have on the ground <laughs> is finally gone Saturday, um, we could have a nice bike ride and really hash this out further. And we'd come out, I think we would even build on our own ideas there. And that's where I'm saying, and I kind of wrote this down is like, you know, give yourself, if you have a hobby like this, 
and of course mine's going to be bicycling. But give yourself permission to step into that and get into your joy state mm -hmm. and maybe see if a part of your career can come out in that hobby. If it's running, if it's climbing, if it's skiing, what parts of you naturally show up in that? Yeah. And I'll be riding a bike and talking science. I'm like, yes, I talk science and road bikes today. Man, that was a good day. Yeah. Someone has told me that it's kind of about finding your core essence. Yeah. So like cycling is the like physical thing you're doing, but yes. there's something deeper that is really happening in your heart, your soul, your mind, your being. And that's what's carrying forward into these other ways of your work and the way you think and act. Right. And so even if you're not on your bike, it doesn't mean you've stopped that part of yourself. That energy is still in other places. Does that make sense? So I think it's a, a Newton's law. Mm. Objects in motion stay in motion. Yeah. And if, you know, if I come off a bike ride, that bike ride to the coffee shop, and I've had the energy and I've had the relationships and the conversations and maybe on the way home, I have the idea of what I'm going to go work for on client B. And I take that momentum into work, knowing full well, I've only got four hours to work really hard because I'm planning to do another like training ride at 4.30. Uh, that, that's a perfect day for me. Nice. I think that's totally right. These these threads come in and out. They're all weaving together. And the Newton's Law, I'm going to borrow that too. Um, and Linda just popped up in her comment on LinkedIn that these applicant tracking systems, which we are all facing in the digital age, that they don't recognize special blends. And so I do just want to pause on that comment for a second because it's true, right? Like hybridity doesn't fit into tracking systems. And I think it is playing a little the catch 22 game that we still have to break ourselves down into parts, right? To be the right keywords, like yeah. you do marketing and you do this and social media, et cetera. And then still there's space though for those personal summaries, those little blurbs about us, right? Where. I have another little coffee time out. Yes, there, there are places where. Great. There we go. <laughs> you can be a passionate fan of your undergrad school, or you can be a you know volunteer EMT in the mountains, yeah. as well as a VP of marketing. Totally. And I think the way that you tell your story is where the hybridity starts to come through. The special blend makes sense. Do you have because a secret like telescope on my notes? Because that was telling your story is I think how this in marketing, I tell my clients, please tell me your story. And then we're just gonna start telling your story. Mm. And this, this is how these emerge. Well, Courtney, I think let's use that as our audience takeaway for today is telling your story, right? Telling your story is how you make sense of yourself. Yeah. And it's how you talk about how all the disparate parts of yourself fit together when they seem so different. Right. What, what would you wanna tell the audience as a takeaway on that? Uh, you know, life isn't a one chapter book. And as you go through life, you can look at it on that timeline of chronological, but there are also maybe chapters that are happening in, in sync with each other. I yeah. mean, and maybe you flip between those, like you're in a good book and you're flipping between like chapter five and chapter three, mm. but you're still telling that story. And nothing helps someone relate to you more than, well, yes, I own a marketing company, but I mostly ride my bikes and that's where I get all my ideas. And I've immediately stopped the person in their track who wants to put me in that marketing silo. And they're like, oh, she has this whole other life. Mm. That's beautiful, right? I think you gave another great analogy of, we aren't just one chapter books for multiple chapters and you can go back and forth and even maybe it's multiple books being written at the same right. time. And that is the story of us. And we're trying to help show it's not just this linear order, this, then this, then this. It's like, these are simultaneous parts of ourselves and that's what we have to share and reveal. Right. And it takes, again, that mirror, that outside support to learn how do we show the hybridity in a way people understand? Yeah, I think just start 
start telling your stories to people that could be mirrors for you. I love and that. what they say back in response is, is your new guideline. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a great one. Courtney, where people find you, follow you, um, learn more about you? Uh, well, I said, you know, like marketing, I do everybody else's, but not my own. Um, <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram is where I'm most active. And that's at be balanced, be well. I also have the at cyclista marketing um, on my LinkedIn. I do check that occasionally. <laughs> and uh, cyclistamarketing.com, C-I-C-L-I-S-T-A marketing.com. Awesome. It's the Spanish spelling, right? You're it is Spanish. Yes. I love that. And of course, more than my title.com is where people can follow more about the hybrid tools and my research and the book. And there's a lot of free things on there to get you started. The Venn diagram Courtney mentioned is a really great tool. And I'm on Instagram at more than my title. Courtney, it's been such a pleasure. I really enjoyed this and you've given me a lot of food for thought. I'm definitely taking the special blend away from this. Um, anything you wanna say before we go? Well, let's ride. And that's an extension to anyone. If you need to reach out on LinkedIn and we have a virtual bike ride where you think through things, but yeah, maybe someday we'll have a ride through Denver. I love that. I would love to ride with you someday. Thank you. Thank and you so much, Sarah. I'll see you again, I hope. Yes, thank uh -huh. you, pleasure.